That's a decent beasting. That's that's a doozy. Well, let's see. Take your shirt off. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, you don't mind being shirtless, do you? No, I think I, right. can, I can handle it. All right, we have an area of intense redness that you can see right here. This is not writing. And then you have this other area here. <clears throat> it's hot. Oh, it's, it's... It's definitely hot. Slightly swollen. And you can kind of see a little puncture wound right there. <clears throat> right there. Mm -hmm. So, how's it, how does that bee sting feel? It is so itchy. It is incredibly itchy uh, all around. In the middle of the night, I found myself just batting at it. And it stung actually for what felt like a day, like a full day of pulsing and radiating uh, stings. Or stinging sensation rather. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to look out for? Is there anything that I should actually be concerned about? It's a doozy. It's a good one, actually. That's a good one. Yeah. So, folks, with bee stings, the thing is, most of the time, it's harmless. You've heard of people who are allergic to bees, and it can trigger asthma. It can trigger swelling of your throat, and that closes down, and you can't breathe or swallow. Those would be emergencies where you would be like 911. If you had on hand some Benadryl, you would give it. If you had on hand some prednisone, which is a potent anti-inflammatory that's prescription, you would give it. And if you were struggling to breathe or swallow, you would call 911. Of yeah. course, that's rare. Mostly what you get is this intense pain and redness and it's spreading. And usually it's just allergic response to the venom, right? So the bee has stung you, injected some venom and your body's going wow, right? Inflammation to try to take care of it. Rarely, but occasionally, because you've punctured the skin and all of our body is covered with bacteria, mm. especially staph and strep, but we particularly hear of staph. You may have heard of MRSA, methicillin resistant staph aureus, super common skin infection, what we call a cellulitis. On the face of things, when you look at redness of the skin, that's cellulitis, mm. but in this case, you got stung. So it may just be, and it probably is just an allergic reaction to the bee sting. Question for you. Yes. I, um, I did, Itch it so hard today mm -hmm. that it broke open, started bleeding, and then a bunch of clear fluid yep. came right out. And then I didn't have a chance to clean it probably for an hour. Okay. To Has be it been cleaned since? Mm -hmm. Perfect. You would clean it, scrub it with soap and water if you're home and that's all you've got, that's fine. And I did an alcohol swab. Uh, or if you have alcohol swab or peroxide, you just get it clean, mm -hmm. betadine, clean it, and then just cover it. If you happen to have a triple antibiotic or a bacitracin or mupiracin, fine. Put a little antibiotic ointment on there and cover it. Watch for infections. How How, it, what's going to be the difference between an allergic response and an infection? Not much. Hmm. They're both red, they're both hot, they're both swelling, mm -hmm. which is everything you would think of as a cellulitis or infection, right. but that's the same thing you get from a response to the venom, if it's a bad sting. So how do you know when, how You'll, do you differentiate, like fever? Well, for sure if you get fever, that's infection, not bee sting. Are you going to put an outline to make sure it doesn't... So that's the other thing. We would put an outline around it and then you can track it over time. And usually the bee sting reaction is fairly immediate. Okay. Right? I mean, if it continues to grow like an inch out now, instead of a size of a silver dollar, you've got the size of a grapefruit or mm -hmm. something. And it's, that's worrisome for infection. Mm -hmm. uh, the bee sting is going to be immediate, local, and not continue to spread after a few hours or a day. Hmm. So if it keeps spreading, we worry about infection. But what really reassures me that it wasn't an infection is you said when you broke it open, scratching it, it was clear fluid. Okay. As opposed pus, to pus? White pus is an infection. Hmm. Allergic is clear. Hmm. So that was the distinguishing feature there. That's good. So folks, we're going to get a little pen and do a little mark around it so he can look later in the day, look tomorrow, and just make sure it's not going way crazy bigger compared to what it was. Do you have any thoughts about getting the actual stinger out and if you do or don't and if it makes any difference for how you'll experience the sting or the recovery from the sting yeah so there's always talk about getting the stinger out and i've in my entire practice maybe gotten one or two yeah i mean it's just it's usually not there i think you scrape it off with your fingernail sure. or it, it just ends up not being something you can get but sure. if you see it and you can get it and you've got tweezers go ahead and pop it out okay no problem there you can put a little pressure on both sides and see if you can 
snag it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dr. Dad. Yeah, you're welcome. So anyway. Uh, well, let's mark it. We're going to mark it. Yeah. I got to go get a marker. Or a pen? Would you pen that one? The pen wasn't working. Oh. I need a permanent marker. I'll be right back. All right. Okay, now that he's gone, I can tell you the real story. I was moving through a jungle-like nature exhibit when I came upon a hive of bees. A friend, Double Doggy, dared me to kick the hive. I, being the reasonable person I am, I did that. Maybe one got away with a sting, but I like to think that deep down, I won that battle. Oh, he's back. <laughs> okay. If you're a bee or a yellow jacket, watch out. You might sting him, but that's the end of it for you. Mm -hmm. So I usually just do a little dot around what I'm seeing as the main area of redness. You can kind of make it out to be about like, like that. Okay. All right, so if you're out to here, and it's, especially if it's angry red like that, then you're worried that that's infected as opposed to just a local reaction. There you have it, folks. Don't forget to share this with all your bee fearful friends. No, mm. just share it with anybody who's interested. What do you do about bee stings? Not too much. And the hydrocortisone and maybe a little pain medication if it's really, really bothering okay, you. Okay, so if you're having ice. a... Uh, yeah, no harm in ice. Uh, good question. Uh, ibuprofen is always preferable to Tylenol. Unless... How come? Why? Uh, look, acetaminophen is highly toxic to the liver mm. with a very narrow therapeutic range. If someone has been stung before, is there any increased likelihood that they could have a reaction, even let's say if they don't remember necessarily having one from like as a child? Yes. Does it change based on the frequency of getting stung? Yes and maybe. Okay. So if it's your very first bee sting, it's highly unlikely you're gonna have a scary, serious reaction. Why do you think that is? Um, the immune system gets primed by a previous reaction. Mm. And so now if you're gonna mount an allergic type response, you had to have seen it before. I see. So there's that factor and there's the dose. I had a patient this past year who actually wasn't that long ago, it was this past summer, so just this last couple months. They were camping and they lifted a log and that had a nest. Bee stings came. And a whole swarm of bees yeah. just stung this kid all over the place, probably 20, 30 stings. Oh my God. And they swelled up and they had to, you know, they, thankfully the child did fine. Right. But yeah, you get Risk too- Risk of airway problems. Yep, and, yeah. too large of a dose, you can start to have airway problems and things like that. What's the worst bee sting you've ever seen relative to the way mine visually looks for a single bee sting? Is this like, would you consider that to be a decent looking bee sting as far as reactivity? That, or yeah. is that like a bad No, that's, that's a big one. That kid who had the 20, 30 bee stings, I'd say the worst of them were close to that, but there was just so many, oh, okay. right? So that's, that's a good reaction. Cool. Maybe you gotta be careful next time not to be uh, so reactive. To no, don't. <laughs> well, that too. Don't don't be so cavalier. Like ah, swat you out of here, do you? <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Paul. Noah, Noah. Has, has has been producing this channel ten for 10 years. years. In fact, a little history for some of you who've joined us more recently. When he started this channel, I say he started because he begged me. He says, Dad, please, you've got to start a YouTube channel. I said, no, no, no. He says, well, do it for me. He was going through some hard times of his own, mm -hmm. which you can see if you go to his channel, Big No-No, if you want to go way back, it's some scary stuff he was going through. Um, What's a dad to say? You're gonna say no to your son who's struggling? He so did say no. I did the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Three months later, he said yes. But then he begged and he yeah. politely said no. So anyway, I was just doctor nervous about YouTube mm -hmm. and what's that gonna do to my reputation? <laughs> Look what happened. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm really glad we've done this because this has been a fun platform to educate and entertain, and he's pretty entertaining, don't you think? <laughs> Isn't he incredible on camera? We seldom have a chance to both be on camera and chat, true. but just know that we appreciate you. And however the channel moves and grooves and evolves and ebbs and flows, the intention is to always put out content one way or another, some point or another, no matter what. Um, yep. So thank you for the people to just stick with us and, and support the channel and support dad. And um, yeah, we appreciate it. We do appreciate you. Thanks for watching. All right, adios.